pronouns and loving greetings to our spiritual family worldwide and to those of you who are new to our services. My name is Sister Karuna and I am happy to be here with you today and to share inspiration from the teachings of our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda. Let us begin our service with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Uteshwar, our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Beloved Lord, reveal the vast kingdom of thy presence. Reveal thyself. Teach our hearts to pray. Teach our souls to feel that all doors may open and thy presence be revealed. Awaken our hearts. Om Peace. Amen. The subject of our service today is how you can talk with God. And to those of you who have read the autobiography of a yogi, you know that Paramahansaji would not be one to be satisfied with a one-way conversation with the Lord. He wanted to know God, to commune with God. And that is what we want, consciously or unconsciously. And during our service today, I will be sharing with you some thoughts from a wonderful little book, How You Can Talk with God. And this is a compilation of a couple of lectures given by our guru on this subject. But before we go any further into our subject, let us have a meditation together. Meditation is the very essence of our teachings, and it is meditation it is through meditation that we find all that we are seeking, truly seeking, inner joy, so needed in the world today. And above all, we find as we meditate deeper and deeper that God is real and close, closer than our dearest friend. And we will be chanting. Chanting helps us to awaken devotion and to concentrate the mind on the divine. So let us meditate together. So now let us assume the proper meditation posture. The spine is straight, shoulders are back, eyes are focused at the Christ center, the point between the eyebrows. And then just relax the body and the mind. Let us deep breathe, tense the body, exhale and relax. This is a thought we can take into our meditation. Guruji said, the temple of God is within your soul. Enter into this quietness and sit there in meditation with the light of intuition burning on the altar. There is no restlessness, no searching or striving there. Come into the silence of solitude. Remember and realize the forgotten image of God within you. We will now chant at thy feet. Listen to my soul song, listen to my heart song, listen to my soul song, listen to my heart song. In secret in my soul, I will gather blossoms for thee, dipping them in devotion. I will lay them at thy feet, dipping them in devotion. I will lay them at thy feet. 
Listen to my soul song, listen to my heart song, listen to my soul song, listen to my heart song. In secret in my soul, I will gather blossoms for thee, dipping them in the ocean, I will lay them at thy feet, dipping them in the I will lay them at thy feet. Listen to my soul song. Listen to my heart song. Listen to my soul song. Listen to my heart song. Listen to my soul song. Listen to my heart. Song.
as most of you know, our guru came to the West to show truth seekers how to find freedom in God, how to commune with God, and to realize through practice of the balanced path of yoga, meditation, and right activity, the divinity of the soul within each one of us. Paramahansaji didn't come to the West to bring another religion or to lord over us how wonderful God is. His only desire was to give us a glimpse of God and to help us realize that we, as children of God, have the power to not only talk to God, about God, but with God. And Guruji gave us proven scientific meditation techniques that help us to go deep in meditation, to interiorize the consciousness. As it says in the Bible, the kingdom of God is within you. Our Guru also brought an extraordinary example of what he was as a seeker and how he struggled for God and what he is as an omniscient, omnipresent, ever-living Guru. And during the service you will hear me refer to, to our Guru as Master. And that is in recognition that he is a Master, a God-realized Master. Also during our service, I will be quoting from Sri Dayamataji. And as most of you know, Dayamata was one of our Guru's foremost disciples. She was the president of the Self-Realization Fellowship for 55 years. She guided the work with attunement, and she was a natural leader. But more than that, she was a true lover of God. She had that wonderful, intimate relationship with Divine Mother. This is what she said about the Guru. The world will not see one like him for many ages. Long after you and I are forgotten or become faded memories, the life and divinity of that Great One, whom we call Guru, will continue to inspire souls and remind them that they too can know God. And now, after a hundred years, the teachings are all around the world. Devotees are finding truth. They're finding inner peace. They are finding, through the Kriya Yoga meditation techniques, they are finding God. They are communing with God. So let us now practice an affirmation together. Affirmations, when they are repeated with deep faith, help us to realize the truth behind the words. So let us affirm. Please repeat after me. God's vastness I glimpsed in the skies of quietness. His joy I tasted in the fountains of my existence. His voice I heard in my unsleeping conscience. His voice I heard in my unsleeping conscience. Unsleeping conscience is that quiet, intuitional, guiding voice of the soul that you might say is the voice of the soul, the image of God within us. And now I'd like to read a, a beautiful quotation from this wonderful book, Enter the Quiet Heart. And this is a treasure. It's filled with excerpts by our beloved Dayamataji. And she focuses on how to create a personal relationship with the Lord and how to commune with God. And I'd like to read a quotation from the book. She said, The ability to love purely and unconditionally comes from meditation, from being in love with God and silently conversing with Him in the language of your heart. I don't think there's a moment in my life that I'm not talking to him. I'm not much concerned whether or not he talks to me. But I only know what joy comes from inwardly conversing with God and then suddenly feeling a great thrill of divine love or bliss or wisdom pouring through my consciousness. Then I know, ah, Divine Mother, it is you who give that which I seek. When Dayamata talks about that great thrill of divine love or bliss or wisdom pouring through her consciousness, that is communion with God. Those are qualities of God. God is love, bliss, and wisdom, and speaks to us through His divine qualities. 
God can also be a divine awakener. Over the ages, the Lord has talked to many devotees of all religions, those who struggled and prayed and fought against illusion to realize the truth. And not all those souls were born angels. Some had to be rudely awakened. For example, St. Paul the Apostle. On one of his campaigns when he was persecuting the Christians, I guess the Lord figured it was time to awaken him. He was thrown off his horse, he was blinded by a great light, and the Lord talked to him, Paul, Paul, why do you persecute me? I think for our first conversation with God, most of us would like a less dramatic encounter, more of an uplifting experience. But to his credit, St. Paul became a great saint, one who is often quoted, pray without ceasing. And what does that mean, pray without ceasing? Dayamacha said, it means a moment by moment communing with our eternal friend. In his early years in this country, our guru went through some very difficult times, and there was a time when he didn't have the funds to pay the, the mortgage of Mount Washington, the mother center here. And at the same time, one of his wealthy disciples offered to pay for that mortgage, but there was a condition. He wanted to commercialize Master's sacred teachings. Well, our guru wouldn't compromise. He, he would not compromise his high spiritual ideals, his spiritual values. So he refused. And that was quite a test because he could have had that mortgage paid off and he had to come up with it very soon. And just recently, the nuns were listening to a recorded talk by our beloved Dayamataji, and she was reminiscing about Guruji's struggle on paying the mortgage here at Mother Center. And this is what she said. Two months later, while teaching in Kansas City, Missouri, he met his exalted disciple of many former lives, Roger C. Janakananda, who was destined to play an important part in Self-Realization Fellowship. This great soul, embracing the Guru as his own divine teacher and the Guru's teachings as his everyday way of life, gave the funds in which to pay the entire mortgage. Dayamata continued, Great was the rejoicing when, down by the Temple of Leaves at Mount Washington, a bonfire was made and the mortgage thrown into the flames. By the way, at Mother Center, we don't have bonfires anymore. She continued, being very practical-minded, Gurudeva took the opportunity to roast potatoes. The devotees gathered around the bonfire with the guru and enjoyed the potatoes while the mortgage continued to roast until well done. Dayamata said, these were the most delicious potatoes she's ever had. Guruji turned to Divine Mother in so many ways during challenging experiences. On another occasion, when he was going through financial difficulties, this is what he said. If only everyone could feel the grace of God as I have felt, they would know as I do that in Him they already have everything. That was my experience in Phoenix. I was deeply, deeply praying and meditating because I had to meet a great need in the morning and someone had failed me. My prayer was not for money, but for freedom. I said to Divine Mother, why am I put to such troubles? Why do I have to face such a crisis? But I didn't stop there. I went on meditating and then prayed to Divine Mother, talk to me. If you tell me to do so, I will leave everything behind and walk out of this organization singing thy name. I do not need anything but you. I ask nothing for myself. Test me. If you will it, I shall at this moment leave everything. In thy light, I shall walk away. Guruji continued, When Divine Mother saw that I meant what I said, this is what she said, I freed thee long ago. Dance of life or dance of death, know that these come from me and as such rejoice. 
What more dost thou want than that thou hast me? And Guruji said, from that day on, I found freedom. And Guruji continued, if you have in your consciousness the desire to please God above all else, he will look after you. What more dost thou want than that thou hast me? Will you remember that? Every one of you? It isn't much to remember. If you will meditate and sincerely pray to God, you will find him. So how did our guru receive that blessed response from Divine Mother? He asked, he asked for her response. And not just casually, he demanded. He said, talk to me. And he made the effort. He prayed and meditated. That is how we get the attention of the Divine. I remember many years ago, I was visiting with my brother in his home, and I was standing in his living room talking to him and his wife. And as we were carrying on this conversation, their little two-year-old would come over periodically and tug on my brother's shirt and ask him to play with him. And each time my brother would say, later on, honey, I'll, pl I'll play with you after we're finished here. And this happened about two or three times. So the child gave up on my, my brother and then started on his mother. And she did the same thing, later, honey, not now, not now, I'll play with you later. At one point she left the conversation and she went and gave him a little toy to play with and played with him for about a minute or so and came back to the conversation with us. So at one point, as we were talking, this little child planted himself in the middle of us and said at the top of his lungs, with fire in his eyes, I need to have my needs met. Talk to me. Well, I was stunned. My brother was a little perturbed but his mother melted. She picked that child up, embraced that child, okay, honey, what do you need? That child would not take not now for an answer. And he got what he wanted. He got the mother's love. In the Self-Realization Fellowship Lessons, Master says, as a child of God, nothing is too good for you. He also said, our situation is like that of a child who calls for the mother, but the mother does not think it necessary to come. She sends a plaything to keep him quiet. But when the child refuses to be com comforted by anything except the mother's presence, she comes. If you want to know God, you must be like the naughty baby who cries till the mother comes. You may remember that story in the autobiography where our guru, as a young boy, wouldn't give up until he received an answer from the Divine. It was during his visit with that beloved saint, Master Mahashaya. And our guru said, The angelic appearance of Master Mahashaya fairly dazzled me. With silky white beard and large lustrous eyes, he seemed an incarnation of purity. His upraised face and folded hands apprised me that my first visit had disturbed him in the midst of his devotions. The saint said, Little sir, please be seated. I am talking to my Divine Mother. And Master continued, The bitterness of separation at my mother's death I had thought the measure of all anguish. Now a consciousness of separation from my Divine Mother was an incredible torture of spirit. Holy Sir, thine intercession. Ask Divine Mother if I find any favor in her sight. And Master continued, Beyond reach of doubt, I was convinced that Master Mahashai was in intimate converse with the Universal Mother. And here is where the young Yogananda knows he can press his advantage. He said, Shamelessly gripping his feet, deaf to his gentle remonstrance, I besought him again and again for his intervening grace. And that is the kind of determination and persistence that we need to get the attention of the Lord. Guruji continued, The Master's response came with a slow, compassionate smile. I will make your plea to the Beloved. 
our guru returned to his home and his, and his meditation room and meditated for several hours. And he said, the darkness of the warm Indian night was suddenly lit with a wondrous vision. Haloed in splendor, the Divine Mother stood before me. Her face, tenderly smiling, was beauty itself. And she said to him, Always have I loved thee, ever shall I love thee. Always have I loved thee, ever shall I love thee. So now you might be thinking that I'm partial to Divine Mother, which I am, because, as our Guru said often, the mother is closer than the father. And so very important in our appeal to the Divine is devotion. Dayamataji said, the easiest way to find God is through devotion. She also said, and this is very encouraging, God responds not necessarily according to our merit, but according to the depth of our longing for Him. So it takes patience, it takes persistence, and even if we're struggling with our bad habits and flaws, keep on. Over the years, there have been many accounts of ordinary people who have had near-death experiences and have conversed with the Lord. Before I entered the ashram, I was a nurse. And I remember some patients very clearly, but one in particular. He was a middle-aged man. He was terminally ill. And my assignment was to clean and treat his very, very large radiation room wound. He was extraordinary because he was in pain, but he was always happy. And I would walk into his room and I'd be rather sad because I felt he, was, he, was, he wasn't long for this world and there was something special about him. He was always happy. He was very cheerful, and one time he, I walked into the room and he said, Hello, young lady. God bless you. With a great big smile, you've come to clean up my sins? And one day I asked him, How can you be so happy? Don't you ever feel sad? And I wrote it down. He said, Oh, no, I can't be sad. And then there was a long, thoughtful pause. He looked at me and he said, I've never told anybody this, but I think you will understand. I died twice in my life, once during the war and once here in this hospital. And he said, each time I went to heaven, I wasn't able to remain. And then he said, but my loving friend, the Lord himself, told me it was not yet time. He said he is waiting, he is waiting for me and promised me, when I come to heaven again, there will be no pain, no bigotry, no punishment, only happiness. That dear man said to me, Child, I know what true love is, and I know where I'm going. That is the secret of my happiness. And he said, You should be happy for me. And that dear soul, he passed on with a beautiful smile on his face, and I was very happy for him. I knew that he was with his loving friend. And this prayer is also from Enter the Quiet Heart by Dayamata. And it is really very encouraging. She said, My Lord, I dare to ask you any questions. I never feel shy or embarrassed or blasphemous. You know the simplicity of my soul. You understand my longings for understanding and wisdom. You see me with my good qualities and all of my dark traits. You don't punish me because of the flaws that I have gathered around the purity of my soul. You help me. I do not try to hide my imperfections from you, my Lord. I come to you in devotion, in simplicity, in trust like a child. And I will keep on asking you to help me. Until you respond, I will never give up. Now, how could the Lord not respond to a prayer such as that, that appeal of the heart? I remember when I was first on the spiritual path and I was attending the Hollywood Temple, and I was just starting to meditate, and it was a real struggle. And actually, I was very 
discouraged. So I asked to see Brother Bhaktananda. He was the minister at the temple at the time. And during our conversation, I told him, I'm really confused and I'm really frustrated. I haven't heard a word from God. He hasn't talked to me. Nothing. I've been meditating for two months and I haven't heard a word from him. Plus, he's very complicated. He's father, he's mother, he's, he's, he's light, he's wisdom, he's knowledge, all these things. And <laughs> Brother Bhaktananda looked at me with a sympathetic smile and he said, You forgot love. You forgot patience. And then he said in his matter-of-fact way, You need patience. Your mind is still undisciplined. And you're trying to analyze God, to understand with human understanding the cosmic Lord. He said, the intellect thinks too much. The soul understands. Awaken your soul. He also asked me, how do, you, how do you expect the Lord to respond to you when your mind is so full of discouragement and expectations? So he encouraged me again. Be regular in your meditations. Pray for devotion. Cultivate that personal relationship with the Lord. Talk to him as my nearest and dearest friend. When he mentioned nearest and dearest friend, my soul just lit up. That was the concept of God that I could embrace. Someone who I could talk to anytime, all the time. Guruji said, The Lord is the mother of all mothers, the father of all fathers, the one friend behind all friends. If you always think of him as the nearest of the near, you will witness many wonders in your life. He, he walks with me, he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. As we cultivate a concept of God that appeals to us, there may be different concepts of God at different times in our lives, such as joy, understanding, Dayamata said, the important point is that the kind of thought in which you clothe the infinite should be a concept that arouses devotion in you. Many of you might remember the story of Solomon from the Bible. The Lord appeared to him in a dream and asked him, What shall I give thee? And Solomon said, Give therefore th thy servant an understanding heart. And God said to him, Because you asked for this, and not for a long life, riches, or the life of your enemies, but asked for understanding, behold, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. And I have also given thee that which you did not ask, riches and honor. As we progress, on our journey to God, and we draw closer and closer, and that divine yearning increases. It's, well, it's wonderful to want to talk with God. There's still distance. Why not reach higher and seek union with God? But how do we get to those higher states of consciousness? Through the true guru, the sat guru, such as we have in Paramahansaji. In his unconditional love for the disciple, he only wants our highest happiness. He is keenly interested in helping us over every form of delusion and finding liberation. The Guru is one with the Infinite Lord, and the Guru is necessary to mediate with us. And through the Kriya Yoga meditation techniques, we can reach that highest goal. Master told us that the teachings will be the guru. And most of you know who study the teachings. When you study those words of a God-realized master, you feel a soul-to-soul -soul connection. And one feels that the guru is speaking directly to you. This is a prayer our guru gave to us. And God is speaking to the devotee. Call me, speak unto me from the very depths of your heart, from the core of your being, from the very depths of your soul, persistently, majestically, determined, with a firm resolve in your heart that you will go on seeking me, 
no matter how many times I do not answer. If you unceasingly whisper in your heart to me, O oh, my silent beloved, speak to me. I will come to you, my devotee. Our Guru said that God is more personal than you can imagine. He is as actual and real as you are. Now at this moment, I am hearing his voice. The cosmic sound that you hear in meditation is the voice of God. If once you get that response, you will never feel separated from him again. The divine experience will always remain with you. So how do we talk with God? We meditate, we pray, and we practice those scientific meditation techniques given to us in our teachings. Cultivate that personal experience with the Lord. Cultivate devotion. Be persistent. And be patient. And very important, ask the Guru's help. The Guru will lead us as far as we want to go on the spiritual path when we are sincere and we practice faithfully the teachings that he has given us. To conclude our service, this is a prayer that the Lord expressed through our Guru. To the devotional call of that child of mine who struggles, prays, and meditates in order to know me in body, mind, and soul as the all-pervading, ever new joy, as the ever-increasing bliss of meditation, I silently and deeply respond. Now let us have our healing service together. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their bodies. Om. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their minds. Om. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their souls. Om. Now let us chant Om, sending vibrations of peace, love, and harmony throughout the world. Om. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Beloved Lord, make our souls thy temple, but make our hearts thy beloved home where thou, thou wouldst dwell with us in ease and everlasting understanding. Om. Peace. Amen. <laughs>